walking, and I'm telling you, as God guides and leads in the apostolic and the apostles, it's, to me, I find things interesting because, you know, you study and you, you, you study the word and you learn the word and God pulls the word in you. Say, God's putting the word in you. And, you. and the word is dwelling richly in you. And, you know, you, God begins to pour into you what he wants to pour into his people. Say, God needs the people to know the time and the season. Look at somebody say, you need to know the time and the season. There's nothing worse than being out of place. Amen? There's nothing worse than being out of place, especially in a time where there's so much going on, so many people saying so many things. It's so much, oh my God, there's so much going on. It's like if, you don't, if you're not rooted and grounded in Christ, you, if you're not rooted and grounded in understanding the spirit of God, say spirit. spirit. Because there's so much going on in the carnal, in the flesh. But say, God called you to walk in the spirit. I'm going to, where God is going to take us today, we're going to go on a journey. Amen. We say, get ready to go. My pastor was saying to them to stay on the bus. Amen. My pastor, my pastor would say, stay on the bus. We're getting ready to go on a journey. But I want you, I pray to God that your spiritual ears be open to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you today. It is no accident you are sitting where you're sitting. God desires to speak to you. And I'm going to tell you something. I don't go anywhere without expectation. Amen. Why go anywhere without expectation? That's crazy. That's a waste of time. If you're not going, if, you, if, if you're going over a friend house, you should still have expectation to have a good conversation. If you're going to school, you should have expectation to learn something. To go to a place without expectation is a waste of time. Amen? So if I'm coming to church, I have expectation. Amen? I want to hear what God has to say because how many of you know it don't matter what uh, the president say it or what the Congress say it, don't matter what nobody say it, they ain't lying to what, what God is saying. Amen? It's a lot of talking going on, but you better be pissed. You better hear what God is saying. In the day of Noah, there was a whole lot of talking going on. But guess you, guess what? If you wanted to be delivered and saved, your ear need to be toned to who? God. God. At that time, your, your ear need to be toned to Noah because Noah was the only one knowing what God was doing. Oh, well, y'all been hear what I'm saying to you. Noah knew what God was doing. The whole world was not tuned in to what God was doing. It was one man tuned in, and that one man was building something that the world was laughing at. The whole world was laughing at Noah, but Noah had been tuned into God to understand what God was doing. We look, look at somebody and say, be sure you're tuned in. Be sure you're tuned in. Because there's three things to be tuned into. It's actually, you can be tuned into God, if I say God. You can be tuned into a religion that looks like God, but it's really man. Or you can be tuned in just to man. Amen? Those are, see, that's where you are. That's where people are. They are either tuned into God, or they are tuned into religion, that's trying to look like God, but really is man. Now they are tuned into man, just the world. Don't, it doesn't matter. Well, look at somebody, we're going to be tuned in. I want to start this, it's interesting what God, I thought it was so fascinating what God wants to take this word today. That's why I said, please, let, don't, don't let nobody distract you. Be tuned in. Look at somebody, I'm going to be tuned in. Let's go to the book of Galatians. I know it's going to be interesting because I know everybody like, it's Resurrection Sunday. It's Resurrection Sunday. Yes, okay, okay. Y'all ever notice something that's interesting about, I'm going to throw this in there real quick. That people say, it's rest, yeah, if they talk about Resurrection Sunday, it's good, it's good, right? But how many of you know that if you, when you study the Word of God and you, and you operate in the Spirit, God will take you places and open things up to your revelation and you'll ask yourself, hmm, you know, like a, mm, because you'll see everything like moving like this, but God is like, yeah, drop something in your spirit. While everything is flowing like this, and God drops something in your spirit, you got to get that, mm, on. well, God, are you moving like this? And, because I thought it was interesting, that the reason, and I want you to remember the things I'm going to say to you. In the book, uh, when Lazarus was dead, when Lazarus had died, and they had buried Lazarus, Lazarus for four days. Everybody know the story? Everybody know the story? Remember when Lazarus died, he was buried for four days? And Jesus allowed Lazarus to die because they knew Jesus, when he found out he was dying, Jesus delayed his coming for two days. And, and Lazarus was buried for four days. And when Jesus called, and they said to Jesus, if I had been here. See, God is wondering about what we are doing because are we having moments if thou had been here? See, are we having holidays and 
We're still trying to find because we're wondering if thou had been here. They said if you had been here, he, he would have never died. And Jesus said something very profound. And the reason why I find it profound because we're celebrating, what is this Resurrection Sunday, right? But Jesus said something that would kind of blow this Resurrection Sunday out of the water. He would kind of like mess it up. He would kind of like mess up what we're doing. Oh yeah, he would mess up what we're doing. Why? Because we're looking to celebrate Jesus on the resurrected Sunday. When, if you go to Lazarus, he was resurrected. He said, I am the resurrected way before the resurrected Sunday. Come on, come on. Somebody, somebody will grab a hold of what I'm saying. In other words, we're trying to celebrate Jesus on his resurrection, and we call it Resurrection Sunday. But Jesus said that if you study the word of God, Jesus would probably have a problem with what we're doing. Because he would say, wait a minute, so you're waiting for me, you're waiting for my resurrection as in my, as in the proof of me resurrection is that I am the one that has resurrection. Did you not read the word when I told Lazarus and they said, if you had been here, and Jesus said, I am. Look at someone say, I am. See, some of us, your pro our problem is you're waiting for a special day and Jesus said, I am. You think your deliverance is far off and you think it's in another day, but Jesus said, I am. Because I believe that Jesus knew that we were going to try to lock him into a day. I believe that Jesus knew that we had a problem. That we have a problem the same way. You know what? It's interesting. That's why, that's I know that's the truth. That's why I even believe Jesus took Martin Luther King Jr. home. Because we have a tendency to turn something into a God of worshiping and not understand the, severe, understand the serious purpose of it. We have a tendency to get crazy like Martin Luther King Jr. What he did was what he did was what God led him to do. But I truly believe if he was alive today, people would worship him. People would be going to him for advice. God. And God says, I'm going to do the same thing what I did to Moses. I'm going to take him home. I'm going to take him home because the fact is, I don't want you worshiping him because he, he didn't do that. I did. No man, no man can do what he did. I did. And yet today, we still miss it and understand no man can do what, my, no man can do what, uh, what Jesus did. Amen? So he says, it's, it's resurrection. He said, but, but you celebrated me on, on a resurrected son. He said, I don't even know what I raised. But he said, I told you way before that day, I am the resurrection. So why are you waiting for a day? Why in your life are you waiting for it if you had been here? If you had been here. Some people, if I could just get there, if you had been here. I, I, I'm just being honest with you. I think Jesus would be like, wait, hold up, hold up. Here we go again. Here we go again. They, 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 they getting excited about it. And then I know the, the church, I know that every pastor and prophet, they don't say the church is a school today, but that's okay. But, but, uh, but see, some of us are saying, well, that's okay, but I'm thinking Jesus might have a problem. What do you think, prophet? You think? I think Jesus is like, because because what Jesus is saying is that they're trying to pinpoint me to a day when I told them that I am. And let me tell us what's interesting about a day. Days are interesting. Because I hear people, especially more ladies than me, let me say, I hear let's say marriage. When they, when they, when they get married, they say, this is the best day of my life. They're women. That's scary when you hear a woman say that her wedding day was the best day of her life. Because the rest of her life will be hell. Oh man, I remember when I got saved. You haven't done nothing for the last five years. You ain't done nothing for the last three years, but you want to testify about the day you got saved and know God is not progressive. So I believe that Jesus said, I, I, I know man. He said, I, 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 said, I know man, I know how man is. Man has a tendency to want to grab a hold of something. I want you to remember this. Man has a tendency to grab a hold of something because we like to become comfortable. We become comfortable. So what we do is, God says, when I'm a progressive God, that's why he says, in your belly shall flow rivers of So I want to, so God says, what I want to do today is, I want to tell you, because see, 
some of us, you're waiting for a day for your deliverance when you should be celebrating today. You're waiting a day for your change when you should be celebrating today. When God speaks, it is. chapter 4 verse 1 now I say that the heir as long as he is a child different from nothing from a servant though he be lord of all maybe we just don't know who we are yet oh, somebody did somebody catch that he said the heir did nothing from a servant because see the heir he a child he don't know who he is yet and God says I got my body act like they don't know who they are yet well God says I'm going to bring you to that I'm going to bring you up gonna, it's time, look, it's time to grow up Go ahead. But the heir is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Say, well, I gotta have teachers. I have to have tutors and teachers, mentors. I have to have people that's gonna help me grow up. Amen? Go ahead. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. Even so, we, when we were children, mm -hmm. were in bondage under the elements of the world. I want y'all to get this. When we were in children, when we were children, we were under the elements of the world. Go ahead. But when the fullness of time was come, when the fullness of time come, God sent forth his son. So we were under the elements of the world. We were under the law. I, I, I want to break it down to you. He's talking about the law, but he's going to talk about the law, but I want you to see this spiritually. He was talking to them about the law. He said they were under the elements of the world, meaning the law. And he says, but when the son, he said, because watch this, the law brought sin. How many of you know people trying to go back to the law so bad? The Israelites like, are trying to go back to the law. I don't know why they're trying to find salvation in the law. The law. I'm not saying God did away with the law, but He fulfilled the law. And if you're trying to live by it, you can't find eternal life in the law. Go ahead. God sent forth His Son, mm -hmm. made of a woman, uh -huh. made under the law, uh -huh. to redeem them. Look at someone say, redeem. redeem. Man, I said, come on. He said, ready to do what to them? Redeem. Is there anybody in the house? Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Some of y'all don't know if y'all don't know if y'all redeem. You, who was in your sin? <clears throat> That's what the whole story of Jesus about is about you being redeemed. You and I were redeemed. That's what the blood did. The blood forgave so we could be what? Say, I say, redeemed. Redeemed. Come here. To redeem them that were under the law. Uh huh. That was under the law. That we might receive the adoption of sons. So when you were redeemed, you were brought into what? Come on, somebody. When you were redeemed, you were brought into what? Look at somebody say, what's up? What, what, you, you sit next to your brothers and sisters. Those who were redeemed from under the law by the blood, by Jesus Christ, he said he redeemed you to make you what? No Baptists. No Pentecostals. Son. No Seventh-day Avengers. Son. No Catholics. Son. No. You'll find that nowhere in the Bible. Because it's about family. It's a relationship. God didn't create the nomination man did. God created family. He sent his son because sin separated us from God. You know how it is when you do something crazy in the household. You know, you disrespect your mom and them, and then your mom had to put you out. There's a separation because of your behavior. Then there had to be a price paid to bring the family back together. Well, sin separated us from God. He was your, he is your father, but sin separated us. You like, we were like a prodigal son. Sin took us away, amen? But God sent his son to pay the price that we could come back. Amen. Because somebody said, what's up, daughter? What's up, son? What's up, daughter? What's up, son? He said, you know what he was. Look at us. No, tap say, no, no, you are truly my daughter of God. You're truly a son of God. If they don't say, take the word of God, say so. Go ahead. And because ye are sons, mm -hmm. God has sent for the spirit of his son. Uh oh, say, because you are sons, say, because I'm a son. He sent his spirit. Go ahead. 
He sent his spirit of his son into our hearts. Somebody should have screamed. He sent his spirit into your heart. That's how you know you. That's how you know you're his. Why? Because your spirit cry out after. See, that's what I'm made to do. What is the sign? It ain't speaking in tongues. People say, it ain't no, you can speak in tongues. The spirit give utterance to speak in tongues, but that's not the, the spirit will give you utterance. The spirit will give you a power, but but the spirit is going, the first thing is going to give you identity. It's going to give you identity. It's going to have you crying out. Come on, somebody. Go ahead. Crying, Abba, Father. See, I'll be, oh, go ahead. Abba, Father. Go ahead. Verse 7. Uh -huh. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant. Say, I'm not a servant anymore. That's why. Let me help you all out. That's why the Bible says, know those who labor among you. And when it comes to relationships, let me help you out when it comes to relationships. If you understand scripture when it comes to relationships, you'll never find yourself with the wrong person. If you understand God's process in scripture, you'll never find yourself the wrong person. Why? Because watch what he says. I no longer call you servant, but I call you son, right? But so watch this. So he evaluated. So anytime you meet somebody, you need to know who they serve. If they're not serving God, then they're no son. If they're no son, they don't belong to you. Unless you want to get mixed up with somebody who belongs to the devil. Or y'all looking at me like, what? That's it. He said, that's why some of us, we pay too much attention to somebody serving you. See, you've been deceived. You're trying to find a man who won't serve you. You're trying to find a woman who won't serve you. You better make sure they're serving God first. Know what God they are serving, and then you'll know who they belong to. See, you busy to my own. Well, he take me to the movies. Oh, he take me to dinner. Oh. Oh, we went to the beach and we sat down and we had a picnic. <laughs> and you come back bragging to your friend's son, he's really, he's serving me real well. Well, guess what? Satan likes to serve your flesh. Amen. Satan likes to serve every desire your flesh wants. And that's why at the end, you know, that's why at the end, you end up getting to him. Some of y'all got that. That's why at the end, because he served your flesh so well, you feel like you owe it to him. But God says, no those, he said, no who they serve you. Because I don't ever call you servant. He said, because I call you son. He said, I call you, he said, I saw that you had a heart to serve me. You had a heart to serve your father. Now I understand your identity. You understand your identity. Yes. But keep on going. That ain't my text. Keep on going. We're going to keep We're going to eat somewhere. we go ahead. Wherefore, thou art no more servant, but a son. Say, I'm a son. I'm a son. See, I got to understand about this sonship. Because if you want to understand resurrection and all that, if you want to understand the, the resurrected one, you got to understand all this, all this. Say, I'm a son. I'm a son. Say it like you mean it. I'm a son. Go ahead. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Say, if a son, then I'm an heir. I have inheritance from the Father through Jesus Christ. Some of y'all gonna get. Some, they should have screamed on there. I have an inheritance to the Father through Jesus Christ. My in oh, my inheritance to the Father is through Jesus Christ. All that I need from the Father is through Jesus Christ. I'm taking you somewhere, please. I'm about to show you something. Everything that is gonna fulfill my life, that what I may need in life. It's through to the Father, but it's through Jesus Christ. Everybody yeah. understand? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Grass a hold of that. You need to grasp a hold of that. Because before we accepted Christ, <laughs> you were looking at everybody else to find everything you need. You were doing everything else to try to pull what you needed. You told lies and you did this. You thought if you did that and did that, you were able to pull what you needed. But he's telling you in the scriptures that everything that you need, you're, you're, you're heir. Everybody says, because the Father, your Father is the creator of heaven and earth and the sea and the corners thereof. All things were made by him and for him without him, without him there is nothing to be made. So he is the one that created all things. So Jesus has now placed you 
back in a position with your father to be heir. All that belongs to the father, you have the ability to withdraw from through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Do we get it? Yeah. It's through nothing else but Jesus Christ. Okay, go ahead. How be it then, when ye knew not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no God. He said, this is what he said. He said, when you didn't know God, you served things that were not God. Some of us, we served men. Some of us, you served women. Some of us, you served your job. Some of us, you served your education. You served things that made you feel. The things that you attached yourself to, that's what you thought your identity was. And the reason why many of us in this room were broken, because what you attached your identity to didn't have power to transform you. It didn't have power to meet the thing you need. That's how you can tell right now you're kind of still shaky, because you're still in an empty wire. You better check who you transform. You better check who you connected to. Because there's no lack in the Father. If you look into your husband to give you joy and peace, you, you, don't miss, you don't miss the point. If you look into your wife to give you joy and peace to hope, you miss the point. Because remember that he says, God is the one. God is joy and peace and love. All in him. He's, he says, I'll give you all things pertaining to God. It is your relationship with God that's messed up when you have no peace. It is your relationship with God that's messed up when you have no joy. See, we like to blame people. So why? So we won't have to face the fact to say we are aligned with God. Because in God there is joy, in God there is peace, in God there is hope, in God there is love, in God there is mercy, in God there is forgiveness. All who God is, you have access to through Jesus Christ. Y'all with me? Okay, let, let's go. Verse 9. But now, after ye have known God, okay, after you have known God, or okay. rather, are known of God. Happy and known God, or rather known of God. How turn ye again to the weak and beggary elements, where unto ye desire again to be in bondage? He says, how can we know God? And we were in, it was that it was anybody ran into the resurrection inside your house? Was there anyone that ran into the resurrection inside your car? Was there anyone that ran into the resurrection at your workplace? He said, but now that you know God, and you knew God as a God that can meet you anywhere, anytime, a God as a redeemer, you turn back to the, what? You have turned back to the weak and beggarly elements were unto ye desire again to be in bondage. Watch this. To them, he's saying they're turning back to the law. To us, we're turning back to things we think if we do this. If I, if I just go to church every Sunday, if I just do this. We're turning back to things that we perceive that will make us better connected to God as if that was what, uh, if, as if those are the things that brought the connection in the first place. Okay, go ahead. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Ye observe days. Here you go. He said, You observe days. And months. And months. And times. And times. And years. And years. You're trying to, you observe days, month, and time. You're trying. Now, what he's talking to the law because he said, In the law, they had this time to be able to acknowledge God. They had this year, this time, and this. They had all these things, days, months, and years. To make sure that they did these things, that they did these things at this season, that they did these things. That's why I got a problem when people start preaching for the Old Testament. I'm like, hold up. You act as if Christ did not fulfill the Old Testament. What do you mean the year of Jubilee? Come on, come on. See, we like to say stuff that sounds good, but the reality, if you add anything to Christ, you take away Christ. If you add anything to Christ to make you free, then you have now taken away grace. So if you do any of the Jewish customs or anything to say, well, I do this, I'm going to be more free in God. I'm going to have more faith with God. I'm going to be a better state of God. Then you have made grace none of that. It is Christ and Christ alone. It is through Christ you were brought into sonship. If I go to church today, I'm going to be good. No, you're not. If you came in here without a repentant heart, if you came in here without really wanting to seek Jesus Christ, you're going to come in and say, it was nice, and you're going to leave out the same.
see when you came in? Why? Because it is not the day that's going to change you. It's your heart being open to the Lord and Savior that's going to change you. It's your heart being open to Jesus Christ, knowing that you need a Savior. You came here to meet somebody. So guess what? My job is to preach the person you came to meet. Ah, this going to be good. My job is to preach the person that you came to meet. I will preach nothing left but Jesus Christ and his righteousness. For all else is that sick and sane. I can't preach this day. I'm going to preach Christ. Okay. I don't preach holidays. Anybody ever walk me ministry? I don't preach. I don't preach Christmas. I don't preach holidays. I preach Christ every day. All day. Watch what he said. Go ahead. I want to... Verse 11. I am afraid of you. He said, I'm afraid of you. This one said, I'm afraid because the more I try to, the more I try to bring you to the place of preaching Christ that you accept the word to be transformed, you keep trying to find life in something else. You keep trying to find life and keep coming up empty. You keep, well, I'm going to go to church. If I get a job, I'm going to be good. If I, I'm going to go to church, if I get a husband, I'm going to be good. If I'm going to go to church, if I get a house, I'm going to be good. You keep trying to add life to things. Even though my scripture says that life does not consist in abundance of things that you possess. No matter how much you possess, there's no life in that. Life came, we were dead in our sins, and without you, and Jesus Christ came in, and he rescued. Look at somebody, he rescued you. He rescued you. Jesus, hallelujah. Go ahead. I am afraid of you, uh -huh. lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. He said, I'm afraid of you because I feel like that everything I've been preaching, it's just, I'm hoping it's not in vain. I'm hoping that what I've been preaching doesn't get you excited for one day. I'm, I'm hoping what I'm preaching gets you plat understanding it's a transformation of life. That you may have, listen, say that you may have, you may have victory, victory every day. Every day. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Verse 12. Uh -huh. Brethren, mm -hmm. I beseech you. He said, Man, I'm begging you. Come on. Go ahead. Be as I am. He said, Be like me. Mm -hmm. For I am as ye are. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And ye have not injured me at all. He said, You're not injured me. He said, he, 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 in other words, why is he talking like this? Because Paul's like, man, I'm trying to give you the resurrection. I'm trying to give you the transformation. I'm trying to give you Christ. And he says, you're not injured me because you keep trying to go find something to add to it. Go ahead. Ye know how through the infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. He said, man, I preached the gospel through you through my sixth stage, through my weakness. Go ahead. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, mm -hmm. ye despised not, mm -hmm. Go ahead. nor rejected, mm -hmm. but received me as an angel of God. He said, you start out hearing the word of God and you even love the messenger. Mm -hmm. You love the messenger. I know how you feel, and I'm sure every pastor knows, you know how you say, people are like, Apostle, you're my spiritual dad. I got cards, I got pictures in my top drawer where people gave me when they was in high school. Apostle, you're my spiritual dad. Now they can't, they won't even say hello to me when they see me. I hate you. But I was a spiritual dad. I, all I did was pull into you, Christ Jesus. My desire was to pull Christ in you and you get mad. You, you get mad. But you know what? See, people get mad. <laughs> When you start preaching to them the true Christ. Because the true Christ is about somebody dying. They don't get mad as long as you're preaching to them about things they want. It's only until you start talking to them about the true Christ. Because Christ, the Bible says, the light. What does light have to do with darkness unless it's there to reprove? See, people don't like the Christ because Christ is a light that begins to reprove. Reprove means expose. Expose what? The issues that abide in us. But what we don't understand, it is the issues that are in us that hinder us from walking in the fullness of life. 
it's, got, it's, it's what's in you or me that will hinder you from walking in the fullness of life. So if we don't like nobody, we like to hide. But I want somebody who's gonna preach Christ. It's beautiful. It is. On Christmas, we we we. <laughs> Also stuck, probably stuck on Easter. No, we, we got the manger. We got Christmas songs and Christmas dances. And everybody, we love to celebrate. And then after Christmas, you know how, come on, y'all know how it is. Y'all know how it is, y'all. Y'all have changed gifts with your boo. Now watch this. The relationship been tore all we long. All year long. And on Christmas, you like what you got. And you sitting there unwrapping gifts. And you see this little cheap gold bracelet. And you're like, oh, you love me. And you see all this stuff. And y'all like sitting there cuddling. Y'all having Christmas sets. You know Christmas sex is right. You happy about the gift. Then after Christmas. Well, I ain't like that shit that you gave me anyway. Yo, ass is up. Yo, make me sit out. That's the truth. God says, I don't want, I don't want no Christianity like that. You received me as an angel of God, mm -hmm. even as Christ Jesus. He said, you received me. He said, I preach Christ so much. He said, I preach Christ so. He said, woman God, he said, I preach Christ so much that you received me as if I was Jesus himself. He said, I moved and, and talked about Christ and moved in Christ so much. You received me as if it was Christ. You received yeah. the word of it. it was coming from Christ himself. Amen. Go ahead. Where is then the blessedness that she spake of? Where are your kind words? Where's the blessings that you speak of? Go ahead, keep going. For I am bearing you record. He said, I bear you record. That if it had been possible, he said, if it was possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. He said, you was we had such a sale at first. He said, I bear record that you know I'm Christ. That at that point, when first beginning, you would have plucked out your eyes, you would have went to the extreme for me. Go ahead. Am I therefore become your enemy? Have I become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. Have I become your enemy? Because you hear the truth. Have I become your enemy? Because I'm trying to shape you in truth. We like to be shaped in our flesh. We like the people to preach things that appeal to our flesh. But we don't want nobody to preach Christ. To redeem you from your dead place. We even like to praise about Sunday. Uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's the Sunday of what? What's the day? The red. We like to talk about him resurrecting. But see, what we, what we never understand is that you can't truly understand the resurrection unless you understand the crucifixion. If you don't understand the price paid, But oh, we like this. But God gave me a word today. He says, 
We like the resurrection Sunday. We like this. But we're not revealing this. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take, take it one more in a minute. Go ahead. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. They zealously affect you, mm -hmm. but not well. Mm -hmm. Yea, they would exclude you, that ye might affect them. Mm -hmm. But it is a good thing to be zealously affected, always in a good thing. Come on, it's good to be affected, zealously. Amen. To be pushed, to be ushered in a good thing. Go ahead. And not only when I am present with you. He said, don't, 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 don't act, talk all holy when I'm present with you. Make sure, make sure, if, you, if you're going to say you got me, if you say, if, you, if you're receiving what I'm saying, let it be something wherever you are. No, in other words, don't just act all right in church. Just don't be in church crazy and then when you leave church, you're going right to your little boo bedroom. Amen. Go on home and disrespect your mom. Lying and cursing. He said, don't let it know. Be zealous to do good works. Amen? Amen. Go ahead. My little children. My little children. Of whom I travail. Y'all got to get this because we're on 19. He said, my little children. Say, say that's me. Go ahead. Of whom I travail and birth again. He said, my little children, who I'm, who I'm going through birth pains. He said, because I'm going through birth pains and I'm travailing again. Go ahead. Until Christ be formed in you. I want you to, to what? Until Christ be formed in you. Say it again. Until Christ be formed in you. So my whole job is to be to see what? I travail, I'm, I'm, I'm coming, I'm preaching to see what? I, 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 I'm going to get wrong. I hope you, I, man, listen. I hope your dreams and your desires come to pass. If you want to be a businesswoman, if you want to be a businessman, if you want to earn great money, if you, if, if you want to be married, if you, if you want a family, if those things are nice, but when you come to this house, my job as the professor of this house is to make sure that you major in Christ. My job is to make sure that your degree is in Jesus Christ. My job is to make because what is all the things that I named, you can accomplish those things. But when you accomplish those things without Christ, you find your life still empty. Your life is still empty. You can get married without Christ, but you're going to be miserable. You can have a life, you can have a business that earns millions of dollars, and you think that's what's going to make you happy. But I promise you, after a while, you're going to still feel empty.
to see. This is Paul. He said, I only have one agenda. I have one curriculum. Every man and woman of God has one curriculum. I don't care what they, all these books and everybody trying to come up, they have one curriculum. It's the Holy Bible. You can't add nothing to it. You can't take nothing from it. It wasn't written by no black man. It wasn't written by no white man. It was inspired by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of truth. And when you plant truth, you get a great harvest. Lies will never bring you to a place of joy. Lies will never bring you to a place of satisfaction. Says so one lie, you have to tell another. Look at someone say, speak the truth in love. He says, now watch this. He says, I, I desire that Christ be formed in you. I'm like, okay, God, okay, God, what you saying? He says, okay. He says, if Christ is our example, he about to, now we finally about to get to my text. I'm like, what? Say, God set it up. Come on, you know when you go to college, you don't go straight to the class, they send you and they have, a, they have what they call introduction. He says, now I'm about to get to the major. If Christ is our example, it is not just enough to celebrate the resurrection. If Christ is your example, it's not enough to take one day and celebrate a resurrection. Especially if the one who is your example says, I am the resurrection. But watch what he says, watch this. This is what he told me, I wrote down what he told me, he says, it's not just enough to celebrate the resurrection, but to imitate. I said, huh, Lord? He said, imitate. The greatest flattery of anyone in great power or position as an example, is to desire to imitate them. You see people imitating Michael Jackson. You see people imitating, it all has been dead, I don't know how long, but he came back because you got all these imitators. We go to Las Vegas. Hey, don't move the home. Pretend. But 
Paul said, I, I, we, in the scripture says, imitate Christ. Imitate me. It's the greatest flattery. But watch this. I'm just, he says, I'm going to read again. If Christ is our example, it is not just enough to celebrate the resurrection, but to imitate. But that is the greatest flattery. Amen? Amen. Now I want to show you this. We're going to go here. I cannot go back. I heard the song, but I said, boy, they was, I, said, they, I said, the man of God was all tuned into what God was talking about. He said, I'm waiting on the Lord, I can't go back. If you're waiting on you can't go back. He says, I cannot go back to something that has been torn down. And I'm like, what you talking about, God? He says, I want to show you something. When I was going to work, I'm driving. And as I'm driving, I'm on 826 and I look to my left. And I notice that where we used to have church, it's torn down. So even if you desire to go back, in your mind. The place is torn down, but in your mind, you won't let God tear down the door in your mind. We can't imitate Christ because we're still battling with something that God wants to tear down. Yeah, wait, I'm just saying what God, he says, I thought it was so interesting, man, that thing leaked in my spirit. And what I was interested about is, it was days to going to work, going down uh, to the office, and I noticed that it all was not torn down at one point. Yeah. It was a process of it being torn down. God is saying, how you will imitate me in the resurrection, and you still ain't finished the process of me tearing down you. See, but now if you go past there, there is nothing left of what used to be there. Somebody hear what I'm saying to you today. See, resurrection has to do Christ. Not, Christ says, I am the resurrection. He says, I am him that brings you from the old to the new. But I need somebody to imitation. I need somebody to look like me in the new. That shows that you have allowed You fail to understand that Jesus Christ said, I am the resurrection. That means every day. He said, no, he said I, when Lazarus was dead, he said, I am the resurrection. I have the power to tear down what is old and rise up that which is new. But see, we just, he said, the problem with my people, the problem with some people, not everybody, is that you just want to dress up for Easter. You're not committed to class. You're not committed to getting the knowledge that renews your mind that will change your life. You like to celebrate days, but you don't like to celebrate Jesus. You like Christmas plays? <laughs> you just don't like Christ. You like spiritual songs? You just let them, you just don't want them to last. You just don't let them stay in your home. You just don't let them stay in your mind. Uh-uh. But say, say, but I'm, I'm getting understanding. Understand. He says, watch this. Even Jesus understood this. Jesus, it's in the scriptures that he understood this. Go to Luke 24. Say, we're going to go tonight. See, I don't want to look at somebody and say, you say Christ is being formed in you. Christ is being formed in you. Which is causing you to be transformed. So you can imitate. So God can be flattered. 
in, on earth as it is in heaven. Watch this. Let's, uh, I'm just going to read, read from verse 1 to 5. Go ahead. Real quick. Go ahead. Luke chapter 24, verse 1. Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, Come on. they came unto the sepulcher, mm -hmm. bringing in the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. They came continuously ready. How many of y'all know what they, they got spices and things in their hands to continue to believe something that he told them shouldn't be? They did not come prepared to stand on the word. Some of y'all like, that's so great. They came with spices, this and that. But you got to read, they're they talking about the first day. This is it's why you coming with these things as though you're coming for him to continually be dead. See, the problem with one of us is you still have things that remind you of your old life. You still coming with things to remind you of your old life. Some of us need to get rid of some t-shirts and some jewelry. Some of us need to get rid of some things that were given to you, the old you. Some of us need to get rid of some letters. Some of us need to get rid of some letters. Because you have, because you have encountered the resurrection. You know those letters when you get sad, you go sit and read them to make you cry more. I don't know why, but people when they get depressed, they want to press. Go watch the most depressing movies. <laughs> Oh, some of us shouldn't be laughing because the truth is you do the same thing, you just do it different. You get sad and you don't come to church. You stay home and sleep like that's where your deliverance is. Are we laughing at my? <laughs> okay, okay. Go ahead. Verse 2. Uh -huh. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre. So watch this. They come prepared to do the same thing, but they find an opening. My God. My God. They find something different. See, you gotta stop coming to do the same thing. Because if you're looking for if you're looking, the resurrection says, I am the resurrection, and I'm looking to duplicate me. Yeah. But I gotta remove some things. Go ahead. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. And they entered in uh -huh. and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Say it again. They found not the body of the Lord Jesus. They entered in thinking they was going to find the same thing. Some of you all, you enter in church thinking you're going to find the same thing you was at your last place. So your heart is already cold. Some of us who enter in a new relationship thinking you're going to find the same thing. So your heart is already cold. You think, well, last week I was here, he cheated on me. The last time I met cheated on me. They did me wrong. So you already prepared for the worst. Because you have not yet run into the resurrection. Y'all think I'm fun about saying a woman of God or a man of God, a man of God or a woman of God who's married shouldn't be worried about the husband cheating. Why? How are you going to be worried about your husband cheating if God gave them to you? And the only reason you think about cheating is because you still carry some things from your past. You still carry some things insecurity. You still carry and even though you look in there, and even though you look in there, it, it, ain't, it ain't the same, you still got insecure, you still feel all, all these different things because you you trying to trust people instead of trusting God. Okay, let's go, come on. Watch this. Verse four. Uh -huh. And it came to pass, uh -huh. as they were much perplexed thereabout. Now watch this. They were much, what? Perplexed. They were troubled because why? They didn't see things as usual. You know what's funny? It is funny when women 
or men running to somebody who's different. They're perplexed, they're troubled because he ain't trying to sleep with them. See, that's how the church is. See, when you are an imitator of God, when they enter into your life, they should be perplexed. Why? Because you shouldn't be doing the same thing the world do. They should have they should have ran into somebody who can resurrect you. God is saying, I'm tired of all these, these fake people that say Christian, but when people run into you, they find the same thing in you. They find I said, they I gotta get this, I gotta get this. They were born into the grave thinking they were find something dead. God says, I'm tired. Dead. You're still dead in your sins. You're still a liar, a cheater, a homemonger. You're still operating according to the world, but yet you say Christ. You're almost like, this, this is how crazy we look. It says Denny's on top, and when you come in, they say you want an oil change. It says Denny's on top, Denny's restaurant. But when you enter and say, you want an oil change? You're looking at them like, your name don't line up. Your name don't line up. You say Christian. And I know you say you serve the one that's a resurrection. But when I get to in your life, all you want to do is dead stuff. You want to just feed your flesh. All I got to do is take you to the movies. <laughs> take you out to dinner. You know, I mess you up and, and buy you some, oh, mess around and give you some roses, man. <laughs> and don't let me open the door for you. <laughs> and then let me do, let me do the old open door, set up. I'm going to rock you to your door and I'm going to ask you for a kiss. You, <gasps> you want to go to the door? Then the next night, I call you. Before you even get in the house, I call you. You know I gotta see you. <laughs> you like wings <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> and then he says, "Come on, I'm gonna cook you dinner." <laughs> and because you're so fresh. You so flesh because if you were spiritual, the Bible says put no confidence in your flesh. You're not putting yourself in no situation. It ain't about trusting him. It's about you only trust you. You said don't worry about it. Don't worry. You won't all stop trying to trust somebody. The Bible stop trusting your own flesh. It's you that puts you in trouble. It's you that calls you to sin. It's you that puts you in harm's way. It's your They were perplexed thereabout. Mm -hmm. Behold, two men stood by them in Watch. shining garments. Everybody, see what your spirit is. See what your spirit is. He got two angels standing. They stand there. They stand where Jesus was, was supposed to be laying. What they say? And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, uh -huh. they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Why do you keep going back to dead things when you're supposed to be the living? Why seek the living among the dead? No. What the angel was saying is, you didn't, he was doing an indictment against them. Why did you come back here when I told you I was going to raise on the third day? Wow. Why did you come back here as if things were going to be normal when I gave you my word and told you that on the third day I was going to resurrect? But the problem, he says, why do you look for the living among the dead? Why are you in a burial ground? See, the part you gotta ask yourself, when people come into your life, are they looking for the living? And they found the dead. Did they 
find someone who has been resurrected in the spirit of God? Or did they find them just flesh that look good? They like to murder people. Did they find someone that was offering light? Or did they find someone who liked to play the dark? Did they find someone walking in the truth? Or they found someone covered up a lie? He says, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is saying, don't you understand? I am he who brings change. How you gonna come to the church? How you gonna come to God's house and and leave and still be? He says, why? Is anybody following me? I'm like, I'm like, he said, why do you look for the living among the dead? This is the same Jesus that Paul said, I preach that he be formed in you. This is the same Jesus that kept his word that says, I have the power to change your situation. That when people find you now, they don't find the same person. This the, that's why I love God. He can take somebody whole and make them holy. And the whole person is now buried, but now the holy person is walking. He can take a liar, now they walk in truth. He can take somebody who's selfish, now they're the biggest giver. But is there anyone that's sick and tired of people saying they're children of God? But when you enter into your life, you find the dead still there. You know what's interesting about the dead? The dead dwell in sin. And sin is a stink to God's nostrils. Meaning their activity, when the smell gets to heaven, God is like, oh my God. Their relationships stink to God. The way they make money stink to God. The way they carry themselves stink to God. But God is not angry with them. Because no one comes to the Son unless the Father draws. Yeah, yeah. He's trying to draw you because He's the one that brings up the dead. Yeah, yeah. So, what's today all about? What is today and every day all about? Watch this. That's three. He says, Why do you look for the living among the dead? But then He says, Watch this. 2 Corinthians 5 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, Nobody was He says, if he raised from the dead, therefore, anyone be in. He says, therefore, you can't come from your state of where you at. You can't move from where the dead where you at unless you are in Christ. If you're not in Christ, you're just a walking corpse. You cute, but you're dead. You fine, but you dead. He says, that's what he says. Y'all gotta get this. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new. He is a new. He is a new. He is a new. See, when you are a new creature, you don't need no resurrection son. Wait! 
the bath in the morning space. And put your clothes on, hoping nobody see the collar behind you. And you wonder when the guy or girl was slow dancing with you while they was talking. Because <laughs> you don't put on so much perfume trying to hide the funk. Somebody wanna see your true brokenness? You put on your little clothes, got your breast showing down here. Got all this, cause you don't want them to see your brokenness. We gotta cover it up society. Everybody's trying to cover so nobody see who you really are. You know, man, we like get swollen. You know what I'm saying? Buy your pants, two sizes small. <laughs> if you're bent down, walking around like this, trying to impress somebody with your flesh. But I guess it's easy to do because she ain't heat anyway. But God says it's time for rest. He said, but those that are in Christ. See, you can't be in Christ and think you just got dressed on, see, on Easter Sunday. See, I don't need to put on, it's, it, don't get me wrong, it's okay to put on a suit and everything. But I don't need to see, there are men who put on suits every Sunday, that's good, that's what they're supposed to, I'm talking about. What I'm saying is that, who are those who just trying to get all dressed up to go to church? But in your heart, you're broken. In your heart, you're still mad. You're angry at your father because he never loved you. You felt he didn't love you. So you've been letting every brother abuse you since that point. You're angry at your boss because you don't like nobody telling you what to do. Because at home, they cursed you out so bad when they told you, saying, oh, never let nobody talk to me like that. Now you misunderstand everybody talking to you to be like that. You got all this brokenness inside. And we have learned in the United States how to dress up brokenness. It's all on Twitter. It's all on uh, Instagram. I said Twitter. Oh, Lord. It's all on Instagram. It's all on Facebook. All you got to do, you look at it. You know what? I, yeah, I think I'm, 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 please hear me in the spirit. Have you ever looked on Facebook? and look at the, 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 the profile picture, and you're like, oh my God. And then you scroll down, and it's like, where's this person at? <laughs> they don't look nothing like the profile picture. You know why? Because we've been taught, put your best picture for it first. So everybody can be impressed by what they think they see. It's only when they set up a date and they, you stand there in the driveway, they drive and my where she at? Where he at? I was out front. Out front where? I was in the pink dress. Something wrong with my car. I gotta go home. But when they open their mouth, all you hear is world. I need this, I want this, I feel this, give me this, take me here. All you hear, they are so thick, insufficient. Because they haven't stepped in Christ to become new. And when you're not new, you're still broken. But God says, I want to tear down your brokenness so you can walk in your newness. Amen? Let's, let's finish it up. Come on, let's finish it up. Because some of y'all can see y'all like, um, I should have came next Sunday. Same message. <laughs> Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Watch this. The old has passed away. The old has passed away. When you come to college, if you want to be a nurse, your ignorance has passed away if you have set under the right profession. You know how to take blood pressure. You know how to you know how to withdraw blood. Why? Because you have set in a place that has given you a you to do what you're becoming. So if you come into the house of God and the professor is preaching 
Christ Jesus, then you're going to know how to forgive. You're going to know how to be long suffering. You're going to know how to have self control. You're going to know how to have joy unspeakable. You're going to know how to walk in peace and pass all understanding. You're going to know how. Because I know how. Because you're getting knowledge right. Because you're becoming like Christ. You can't sit up under the possession and not age unless you're not. You there, but you're not there. Some of us, you here, but you waiting. You got a date late on the night. You got a flesh set up tonight. You only did this to meet your quota. Just say I went to church on on Sunday. So you came in, going to hell, and you gonna leave going to hell. Unless you don't harden your heart. Yeah, but that doesn't mean I harden your heart. Stop telling God what you want. And listen to what he has for you. For well, I promise you, it's much greater than what you want. All you got to do is take inventory. When you look at what you want, just do what, do, do what they do in credit. Do what they do when they do when they run a credit check. They take your social security number. And they run your credit. Yep. And they tell you, you can't get this car. Why? Because you ain't paid for the last one. <laughs> so God, so God wants to run a credit check. He wants you to run a credit check. How long have you been in the driver's seat of your life? 23 years? Now let's do a credit check. Amen. You chose that dude who dogged you out. Hallelujah. You chose that female who a liar and a cheater. You cursed that boss out and got fired. No. So your decisions have you stuck where you at. Yeah. Looking good with a bad attitude, rude, empty, broken, and hurt. So God says, I love you. Will you move over and let me drive? Because yeah. Christ said, I go before you to make the crooked road straight. partner you get to that business deal with, I already knew he was a cheater. Well, because you wanted to drive. Because you didn't understand scripture. It says lean not to thy own understanding. God says stop leaning to your own understanding. Acknowledge me. Acknowledge me. Acknowledge God. Why? Why do you want to acknowledge God? You want to recognize that he knows everything. Acknowledge me. He says I will direct your path. Why? Because I'm the alpha, I'm the alpha and the omega. I'm the beginning and the end. He says, I have the ability to see everything before me. So you won't have to walk in blindness. Why are you choosing when I can lead you in the right direction? I can prove to you what I'm saying. I said it before. Some of us are seers. How many seers we got in the house? A seer, what is a seer? People will have dreams. And what God does is he peels back time and let you peek at something before it becomes a past. And when you see it, and then you tell somebody, has anybody had a dream, and you tell somebody, and it happened just like you saw it. That ain't no psychic. That ain't no, the devil can't do that. The devil can't do that. Only God can allow you to see in the time. Now what the devil can do is, he can fool you with your emotions. What do you mean? He can let you see what you want. He can cause you to have dreams yeah. and you think it's about God. No, it's about your own desire. But when it's a dream, and you're like, man, I saw this car, and this car was going to go out, and he was going to get in an accident. God says, let me let you see. Why? He's trying to build you up and strengthen your faith. That's why. He's going to use you as an intercessor. He's going to use you. What is an intercessor? Someone that God can allow to peek and pray to God that that situation will happen that way. Someone who can stay before God and cry out for that person. See, when God can trust you to see, you might not be able to see yet, but he can trust you. He's going to do something with your heart. He's going to trust your heart. Because when he can trust you to see, he knows when he uses you. See, you
you're going to be the one 3 o'clock in the morning praying because why God just showed you something. And that person may not ever know why they didn't get in an accident. But you're going to know. But the Bible says, the sincere prayers of the righteous prevail much. Some of us, you're sitting here because somebody was an intercessor.
Watch this. Watch this. Check this out. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Watch this. Behold, watch this. Behold. The new life has begun. He says, There's a new life that has begun. He says, when you encounter me, there's a new life that has begun. I'm washing away the old. He said, I'm tearing it down that you can't go back to it. How many of y'all know this? Watch this. When Israel was delivered from Egypt, Egypt followed Israel. They followed them to the ocean. And the ocean swallowed up. Hallelujah, Jesus. Egypt. Hallelujah. Watch this. So even though Israel kept crying, we want to go back to Egypt. My God. The Egypt they know was torn out. They got it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They couldn't go back to the Egypt they knew because they drowned. What am I saying to you? What had you captured cannot pursue what that cannot pursue what faith is. When you walk in faith, the faith that you're walking in will destroy the thing that had you captured. The word that you're walking in will destroy the thing that, just, that, that had you captured. That's why Satan's job is to try to get you off track. His job is to give you, he will offer you whatever your flesh wants. If you want a man, you're going to be wondering, he'll come out of nowhere. And he'll wind and dine you. But he's going to take you off the course of Jesus Christ. You want a woman? You want to be by? She's going to come. She's going to get everything you see. People are like, this has to be God. She even got a role where she has one. <laughs> No one can design this the way God does it. <laughs> I mean, no God ain't concerned about no more, concerned about our heart. Yeah. I promise you, if she started cheating on you, the last thing you'll be thinking about is that mode. I hate her and her mode. You ever hear what God, you ever hear what God's saying? Y'all with me, say it. Say new life, new life has, begun. has begun. Let's get deeper because watch this. Jesus said, I am the what? So he says, not on a Sunday. He said, I am the resurrection. Meaning if you don't have a specific day, you don't have a specific day. He said, I am the resurrection. That means you get the resurrection at your job. Amen. You like it ain't a one day celebration. Amen. It's a life. When you step into Christ, you get a new life. Romans 6, 3 says, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? All of us who were baptized into Christ, who came into Christ, you were baptized into his death. What is, it? What, what is the word saying to us? You were baptized into the price that paid for your sins. You were baptized. Baptism means to be submerged. In other words, you were baptized. Because on Christ, all the sins of the world were on him. We were baptized into his death because we were all sinners. And the wages of sin is death. So we had to be all in his death to be resurrected. See, if you're not in his death, if he, I mean, watch this. If, if a person is not in his death, that means they hadn't sinned. Because the wages of sin is death. So we have to be all, he died for what? Sin. So we all have to be submerged in what he died for. So that means all of us died for the penalty of death. How many of you know what I'm saying? So we all were about to submerge into his death, meaning that everybody was submerged into the death because when he died, he took on all the sins of the world. How do we know he took on the sins of the world? Because the Bible says that when he was on the cross and he said, Lord, why has thou forsaken me? Jesus, the word has never been separated from God. But at one time, he didn't feel the presence of God. Why? Because the sins of the world was upon him. Him who knew no sin became sin. That you and I may become his righteousness. So he became the sin. He 
He took on your sin, my sin, every sin. Every sin that you ever committed, every sin that was in this world, he took it upon himself. And he paid the price for you and I. So he says, when you step into him, you're stepping into the one who paid the price. Y'all can hear what I'm saying. It's like this. If a person is a billionaire, and you, you and his family, and you step into his house, you step into everything that, 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 that goes along with his, his house. Amen? He said, you home. Whatever's here, it's yours. So you become a partaker of everything he is. Amen? And Jesus said, well, I'm the one that matched the death itself. So you became, guess what? When you stepped into me, you became a partaker of death to master it. For I'm the price that paid for death. But watch what he says. Are you with me? He says, or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus, who baptized into his death, we were therefore buried with him. Now I want y'all to get through the baptism into death. The problem with some of us is, you're trying to partake of the death, but you won't let God bury you. There's nothing worse than a dead person on top of the earth. Because everybody can see your stink. See, buried is interesting, because buried means I'm covering you. Y'all been hear what I just said. Buried means, aren't you glad God didn't let everybody see your stink? Come on. Is there anybody in this room that God, you aren't you glad that God didn't let everybody see the thoughts that come to your mind? Why you sitting in church? Is there anybody glad that God don't let everybody see that He keep you that you buried? Him? He keep you buried. You baptized from being buried, Amen. Because God, no, oh, come on, man. Have you ever drove by and saw a dog or cat hit and their bodies swollen up and necks and? Maggots all around. Yeah. Well, the first thing we're saying, won't somebody bury that? We're like, I'm not gonna bury it. I ain't getting my hands dirty. Aren't you glad that Jesus was glad to get his hands dirty? Yeah. He said, this one, I thought that was what she said. People are dead, but they're not buried. That's why people keep seeing your people keep seeing your attitude. You say you're dead, but you're not buried. People keep seeing how nasty you are and rude you are. Because some of us you won't let God bury you. You try to bury, you keep pushing past the dirt. You know, when you keep getting up, you keep. You, you like, huh, huh, you like, uh uh. You know I mean? And every time a situation comes, you push the dirt across. You say, I'm a bury. Okay, here come a trial. Here come a trial. Somebody pull in front of your car. No, they didn't. Oh, you shooting burglar. Okay. How much you how many of you know that if you six feet under, the more dirt I put upon you, the more restricted you are. He said, some of y'all like them shallow graves. You just want to look like you buried. Walk in deep. Look at someone say, stay down. And let God transform you. Watch this. Are we learning something? Say, I'm majoring in Christ. I'm getting my. You know what you, know what you get when you major in Christ, right? Yeah, I know what he What did he get, Barbara? What did he say? What did he, he told me in Genesis? You remember what he told me in Genesis? He said, see and crop to the door. What he told him to do? Say it again. He said, I don't give you no BA, he's like, you a master's degree. He said, when you made your class, I'm gonna give you a master's degree. Why? Because when you get a master's degree, you'll be able to deal with that's what you'll be able to deal with sin. He said, master. He said, let me give you that. I want to major. He said, major in Christ. Get your master's degree in Christ. Amen. Amen. He said, okay. We will therefore bury with him through baptism into the death. In order, somebody say in order. That just as Christ was risen, let me say it again. In order that just as Christ was risen, 
So the same power that Hallelujah. raised up Hallelujah. is going to live It says, just as Christ was risen from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too, say we too, we too. May, live may live a new, a new life. life. God drop this to my spirit. Say no more uh, recycling your guilt. He says no more recycling your guilt. For John, John 8, 36 says, so if the Son set you free, you will be free indeed. Sometimes we have preachers who preach messages to recycle guilt. Why? Because as long as you stay guilty, you're gonna feel like I can I can get you to pay your way out. I'm gonna do I'm gonna, I'm gonna preach sermons to give you something to make you think you can pay your way out when the gift is absolutely free. No. Whom the Spirit of the Lord has set free is free indeed. Whom the Spirit of the Lord has set free is free to live a new life. See the resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection. Not no one day. He said, I am. Wherever I am. He said, he said, Mary said, if you have been here, she said, I'm here. Hallelujah. She said, I'm here. And just because I tarry in some of our situations, don't get discouraged. I'm just going to get glory out of that situation. For the Bible said he tarried because he was going to get glory out of that situation. He says, I am the resurrection. And he says, I need you to know that I've given you power to resurrect. Amen? Amen. He said, when you open your mouth, at your job, you have the power to resurrect. Hallelujah. When you pray in my son's name, you know what the, the devil like to say to us? It's done. Your marriage done. It's done. How many know the devil can't take nothing? You give it up. God spoke this to me the other day about someone. He says, the devil didn't take the joy. You gave it up. Because you start focusing on what you wanted instead of what God was doing. See, when your mind is on thanking God for what everything he has done, he can't get your joy. It's only when you get to the place that you think God should do, have done it in a way that you think it should be done that he can steal your joy and your peace and your hope. But see, God knows what's best. So I wanted, God wanted to give this word today. Man, it was in my spirit. And it was, and I pray that Christ be formed in you. Every time I'm preaching, I'm praying that Christ be formed in you. Some of y'all get upset. Some of y'all say, no, don't get upset. You see the word that Christ be formed in you. Let God stretch you. Let God groom you. Prepare you for his glory. Amen? Amen. Because there are lives that you're going to affect. There are lives Amen. that you're going to touch. I may not never touch. Amen. Some of you all are going to touch lives and Turn people's lives upside down because you ran into the one that resurrected you. See, dead people can't raise dead people. How many remember? When I, how many? I remember the illustration. I don't mind. I just want you. To, I want to use you like that. Glasses. I want to show you what I'm talking about. I want to show it to illustrate, and I'm showing her for, what, for a reason. I'm going to see right there. Let's just sit like this. Okay. Now watch this. See, God says, as long as I give her a uh,
said, as long as I'm sitting down here with her, I can't lift her up and she can't lift me up. God preached this last week. We can be pulling. So since we can't lift each other up, we fight on each other. We argue with each other. Why you can't help me where I want to go? Why you don't ever do what I need to do? Why you don't ever do what I need to do for me? And she argued. Am I right or wrong? We argue. Why? Because we can't lift each other up. But see, God says, when you encounter the resurrection and God begins to transform your life, you're no longer sitting down. The Bible says, stand to see the salvation of the Lord. What is he saying? Because now, because I'm standing, I can extend the right hand of fellowship with her. Amen? And I can pull her up. See, you can't change somebody's position unless you get your change first. Amen? You can't change somebody's position unless you get your change first. You can't tell somebody that God is a good God if you don't realize how good he's been to you. See, you can't tell somebody that God saved if you ain't saved. If I'm going into the tomb and you still dead, how you gonna tell me that God is God that resurrected? See, let me tell y'all something. That's the problem the church is having. That's the problem we're having with the church. The problem the world is having with the church is this. We are celebrating a day of resurrection. But the world say, y'all look dead to me. Y'all don't look, where, where's your power at? Your marriage is tore up just like our marriage is. You hate people just like we hate people. You slander one another just like we slander one another. How you gonna tell me about resurrection power and you still look dead? But look at somebody say, God got a remedy. God got a remedy. And then he's raising up his remedy. Amen. And see, y'all got, y'all don't know. See, y'all look, see, sometimes, what y'all gonna say, sometimes the one you're looking at is not the one God you're working with. See, you looking at people today, and you look at these high profile people that you're looking at today. But see, God, God showed me this. See, the ones God raising them, they like David. See, you ain't seen them yet. I'm telling you, you ain't seen them yet. God showed me this today. You ain't seen them yet. You know, they on the back side. They on the back side. You ain't seen them yet. They fly. Don't nobody know their name. Ain't nobody calling their name. See, you, you look at the one, you look at the high profile ones. And everybody impressed on how they can down on the word of God. Everybody, they sit down, they're like, oh, look at oh my God. The revelation, oh. And the, and the whole audience is sitting there being entertained by their ability to, and everybody, ooh, he's so impressive, he's so impressive. Jesus wasn't even trying to get you impressed by his words. His words was trying, his words was being impressive because it was transforming you. You were the impressive part. You better hear what I'm saying. What was impressive was Lazarus. What was impressive was Lazarus was dead. What was impressive was Lazarus had risen. What was impressive was, watch this, they said, let us kill Lazarus, because many of them have been converted because of Lazarus. See, the, the, what, the, what was impressive is they knew Lazarus' last state, but they now see Lazarus resurrected, and now they see Lazarus, and they said, we got to kill. See, when you've been resurrected for real, you begin to what? You begin to change. People want to kill you then. When you resurrected for real, why? Because you are life changer now. You got power now. When people know your old state, oh, I remember when she used to be in the club. I remember when she used to be on the set. And now she walking around talking about she got purity ring. Talking about she been pure for five years. Talking about she saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Talking about she speaking in tongues. She putting on Facebook. Talking about she got a blog. Talking about how the whole other stuff. They mad at you. They mad at you. That brother. Uh-huh. I bet that brother's still scanning. He talking about he saved now. He to my he saved to my Jesus. He on he on Facebook talking about she's on there talking about I know he ain't real. Well I know that brother was slang. I know he was out there scanning making that money. Driving. I ain't real. But see, they some of them have the same problem they have with Jesus. What problem had Jesus? They said Jesus cannot be the Messiah. For it is written that the Messiah will come out of Bethlehem. See, when you're ignorant about the history of somebody, 
Hallelujah. They, they, they said Jesus, the Pharisees said Jesus, he came out of Nazareth. They, they came out of Nazareth. They said he couldn't be the Messiah because it is written that the Messiah will come out of Bethlehem. My God. See, when they never sat down and had an inspiration to realize that he was born in Bethlehem. My God. So they, they disqualified him because they didn't know where he came from. My God. Some people were disqualified because they don't know where he came from. My God. Oh, 
father. She said, you know what? Uh, this is what my, I was molested in. And my mom and all this, she said, but with my daughter, it dies here. Hey! It dies here. And see, something about molestation, it has to die. The fear of it happening has to die. It has to die. When you're a new creature, you can't take the fear where you used to be there. Some of us, you are bad, I see it in the spirit. You are battling with insecurity. Seeing who you are versus who God has called you to be. Just yield to the word of God. Just yield to what God said. I promise you, you don't know more than God. I hear the spirit saying, acceptance seems so easy. But it seems so difficult for people. I said this last night. The man, it was like pain. Um, what was the thing? The theme was pain is not your identity. But God gave such a great revelation last night about pain not being your identity. And God said last night pain was an indicator. An indicator of what? It indicates if there's an issue. And pain came from sin. It didn't come from God. Pain came from sin. But God turned around and took, watch what God did. He ran, he turned around and took pain. And took what the devil meant for pain, what the devil meant for sin, and birthed life. He birthed life out of pain. So God says, through your pain, push. There's something new being birthed in you. Through your pain and push, there's something great being birthed in you. Through your pain, he said, I know it, the, the stretching and the tearing hurts, but through your pain, life is coming. Because he says, I am the resurrection. And God says, watch this. Near, Nicodemus says, should a man enter into his mother's to, to his mother's womb again? My pastor, I remember my pastor said, Pastor Green said, even if he thought that, he shouldn't have said that because that was just stupid. You know you can't enter into your mother's womb. But watch this. But there's revelation in that. Once something is birthed, where you were, you can't go back. Stop trying to go back to dead things. Not there, it's not that's not who you are no more. It's funny how we struggle with a memory. We struggle with a memory. You ain't sleeping with nobody, but in your mind, the enemy continuously throw thoughts of you struggling with a memory. You ain't slept with no, and then you want to feel guilty. No. I'm not recycling your guilt. Amen. Devil, I don't care what you throw at me. I ain't sleeping with nobody. I don't care how many thoughts I'm going to give up the word of God. You can throw how many thoughts I ain't sleeping with nobody. Some of us, we beat ourselves up because he shot the thought. Her Barbara always say the thought ain't yours unless you receive it. Come on! That's his job to do, to tell you you ain't nothing. To tell you you can't accomplish nothing. But tonight, I bind up that spirit of fear, that lying spirit. The Bible says God, not, God did not give you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Come on. Look at somebody say, don't look for the living among the dead. Don't look for the living among the dead. If you're sitting here today, and you say, man, God, I know you was talking to me. I know because I've been finding myself looking for life in dead places. I say this, if I had more money, I'll be better. If I had more notoriety, I'll be great. If I had a man, I'll be happy. If I had a woman, my life would be complete. If I get my degree, my life will be successful. But my Bible tells me that it was Christ that brought you from a place of death. Amen. So if, you, if you're sitting there today and you say, you know what, I'm not, 
I'm about to, you got to get out your seat today. Because Jesus got out there. And I, I'm going to finish the story as you walk up. If you want to walk me up. Jesus got out of the grave. It's funny that he had somebody that a witness. That he was gone because he was gone about his father's business. Now, if you read, if you continue to read 24, what's about 24 it says this. There were two men walking. And the Bible says that Jesus added himself to the two men. And they could not recognize him. And he began to talk to the two men. And what was interesting to make the long story short, he says, they said, when they realized it was him, they said, didn't something burn inside of me? See, one thing about it, when you come from the death to the life, when you hear the word of God, something burning inside of you. You can't hear the word of God and stay the same. Something starts burning inside of you. Why? Because you, you're recognizing who's speaking. Because your new life, your new transformation is, is present. Your, you, your new life, your new transformation is present. And, and God is saying today, today, you don't have to wait till tomorrow. You, you know what I told I, I was 